Greetings. This is Hugh Ballou. Welcome to this session. We're talking about what holds us back as leaders. And a lot of it is invisible. And I'm talking about a lot of different aspects. This particular session is about what psychologists call shadow. And my guest today is Dr. David Ruder, organizational developmental psychologist, dear friend, and America's integrity expert, uh, multiple award-winning author, and um, very valuable content. He has a wealth of resource. Today, we're going to focus on what do we don't know that's holding us back. And I'm going to throw it to David and, and ask you, David, from your perspective, when we talk about shadow, what is it that we're really talking about? Yeah, okay, great question, Hugh, and it's a delight to be with you, of course, as always. Shadow, in the general sense, and then I'll go into a very specific definition, is things about ourselves <clears throat> that we don't know that we don't know. <laughs> and the word shadow or the term shadow in psychology was originally coined by an early psychologist, a, uh, a, initially a colleague of Sigmund Freud's, who then broke away and developed his own approach to psychology, and his name was Carl Jung, J-U-N-G. And Jung is who first coined the term shadow. And shadow is kind of comparable to our unconscious, but we can take that a step further to make that more practical and more, more usable. It is parts of ourselves, both golden parts of ourselves and not so pretty parts of ourselves that we hide, repress, deny, indulge, or justify. In other words, these are parts of ourselves that we have no wish to be or are unaware of being or are unaware of the impact of or don't care about the negative impact of don't care that's fascinating <laughs> so that's shadow i've been in the dark about this <laughs> my life until i met david gruder and you talked about shadow <laughs> know, huh and then it's surfaced several other places and um you know ken cartwright in his podcast talks about reticular vision where we start seeing things i bought a mustang now i see mustangs everywhere now i'm hearing about shadow so from a leadership standpoint how does this limit our effectiveness, this, this not knowing about our shadows? Sure, sure. Uh, well, first of all, I loved your phrase, I've been in the dark about shadow. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how it limits us as leaders is that when we don't know about our unintended impacts, mm -hmm. when we don't know about our unintended roles in what's going right or in what's going wrong, there's no way for us to get a handle on our part to help things go better or our part to do on a more conscious, deliberate level what we're already doing that's helping things go well. So if we don't have conscious relationship with our impact, both positive and negative, especially unintended positive and negative impacts, we are going to be confused as leaders as to why things go well and why things don't. That's why it's important for leaders to have elevated shadow literacy. My brain is just going wild thinking about myself and how many times I could have been better had I only had access to this kinds of information. So Ed, could you give some hypothetical examples of how not knowing something about ourself, the, the shadow piece you're talking about, how that would cause a negative impact? Because I, I see people setting up problems in, in my work as you do. And they're totally unaware that they're actually doing it and blaming other people for the consequences. Sure. Well, let me give you a very simple 
everyday example that everyone can relate to rather than doing the dramatic stuff that makes mm. for, for good conversation, but not much applicability. So on an everyday level, one of the leaders that I mentor had sent out a notification about uh, an email about a specific project to who he thought the project team was. And there was a mislabeling of one of the project team members in that his name was attached to a, a broad notification list. And the leader didn't double check the emails before sending them out. So he didn't know that the name attached to one of the team members was actually an email address that was an email for a group notification list. So what ended up happening was that this notification about a particular project went out to a whole bunch of people that the project uh, that aren't involved in that project. And that, you know, that's just a human error. You know, we, we make those errors. No harm, no shame, no fault, no blame. The shadow piece was connected to what happened there uh, from there. Mm. The shadow symptom, the shadow symptom, and then I'll get to the cause. The shadow symptom was that he didn't then, when it was pointed out to him that he had inadvertently done that, he didn't follow that up with an email to the people he had notified that weren't part of that team, that was just basically an oops email. Sorry, didn't, uh, I, my, my unintended role in, in this, uh, in the, having notified you about something that's not relevant to you was that I didn't realize that an email address that went out to a group was attached to a specific, specific name of a person who is part of this project team. So I, I'm sorry you got notified about something that isn't relevant to you. Because he didn't send out that repair email, what he got back because in, in the absence of that was an angry email from someone who shouldn't have been notified in the per first place about you know, quit wasting my time, quit being careless. It was, a, it was an angry response to having gotten notification about something that they shouldn't have been notified about. That anger was needless anger because I happen to know that the person that was angry would have had no anger at all had the mistaken notification been followed up by an email saying, oops, I'm sorry to have bothered you. I made a uh, mistake. It was the wrong email address for one of the team members and you got notified inadvertently. If that follow-up had occurred, then there would have been no resentment or anger or frustration on the part of the people who were unintentionally notified. So that's the symptom. The shadow piece in this particular leader is a shadow that has to do with a dynamic that's often called special boy. And the special boy shadow is where if I, if I make a mistake or if I have an unintended negative impact, I'm special. I don't really have any repair that I need to do. You should just give me a pass card and not worry about it. And if you get upset because I haven't done a repair, that's your problem, not mine. Now, that's all shadow. It's about impact shadow. I have been in denial about the negative impact, the unintended negative impacts of an unintended behavior of mine or an unintended role that I've played in a complication that's occurred. That's shadow, an example of shadow. Amazing. And it happens every day. Multiple times. It happens every day. Because all of us are human. Well, there was, a, there was a shadow. What were you saying, Hugh? There was a shadow with the leader. Are you there? Mm hmm There was a shadow with the leader. I am. And um, I think there's also a shadow with the person who had the angry email. Yes. 
The shadow, it turns out, with the person who sent the angry email was that he was doing shadow withhold, meaning that he had seen this pattern before in this particular leader and had never sat down with that leader to say to that leader, here's your negative unintended impact from not doing these kinds of repairs. And because I have not sat down with you to let you know about how you are impacting me, I have accumulated increasing amounts of resentment toward you for repeating this pattern. And I've reached what you've heard me, Hugh, refer to as the Popeye point from the Popeye cartoons just before Popeye reaches for his spinach. He says, that's all I can stand, I can't stand no more. And so this particular fellow reached the Popeye point and he attacked the leader from shadow because he, his role was that he was holding withholds. He was holding unfinished business toward the leader and had never sat down with the leader to help the leader understand what the unintended negative impacts of this leader's pattern were on him. That's so good. Now I'm going to have two more questions and then you can certainly fill us in on other things that we need to know from a leadership standpoint. Obviously I'm not in therapy um, in the therapy work, I'm in leadership cultivating work. So my job is to help people be aware of principles and learn how to embrace those and learn more and manage themselves. Um, are there different kinds of shadow? Mm, yes, indeed there are. And, and just for clarification's sake, Hugh, of course, as you know, I have a very deep, long background in doing psychotherapy, but I don't provide psychotherapy anymore. I haven't provided psychotherapy for, uh, well, since 2000. So as the, at the time of our recording right now, that's 17 years ago, I still train and mentor therapists. But what I bring to the leadership world is a deep therapy perspective about mentoring leaders in shadow literacy and in leader effectiveness and in effectiveness at resetting their relationship with power. Uh, so wow. just to clarify that. Um, so did you want to say something before I go on to dimensions of shadow? Absolutely. You just opened up a whole lot more topics for future interviews. So uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so my brain wants to go there, but not now. So okay. let's continue with the shadow. Thank you for that. Sure. So elevated shadow literacy really requires much more than most people who even are acquainted with the phenomenon of shadow realize. So dimensions of shadow include, that are specifically relevant to leaders, are power shadow, where we have leaders who have a shadow relationship with the power that their role, their leadership role has. They're either in power tyranny or they're in denial about the power that they have or that their role has. So they aren't in right relationship with power, with the power that the role, the leadership role has inherent in, uh, within it. Another aspect of shadow is authority shadow. A lot of leaders have power shadow, have, have kind of screwy relationships with power because they have unresolved authority issues. Mm -hmm. They're either in adolescent rebellion against authority or they are drunk on being the authority. They're egotists, narcissists, uh, or they are... Um, they're power phobic, even though they're in a, uh, an authority role. They run away from recognizing the authority that the role that they fill has attached to it. So that's another aspect of shadow. Another aspect of shadow is, is archetypal shadow, because there are, there are basically five core varieties of power that are captured by uh, by archetypes. Archetypes are another term actually from Jungian psychology that are prototypes of key aspects of what it is to be human. So all of us have an archetype 
in us that is about our beingness, our, our just being in a loving place in the world. It doesn't have to do with doing. It has to do with stopping and smelling the roses, right? And, uh, and that is a form of power because leaders, for example, who aren't expressing the lover power, the lover archetype in their leadership are leaders who, who are perceived to be intimidating and they don't even know it because they're out of touch with their lover or out of touch with expressing lover archetypal energy in a good way, in, a, in an appropriate way through the leadership role that they occupy. So that's one example of an archetype, archetypal shadow, where they're, they're not aware of these archetypal energies that influence how they show up as leaders. Uh, third, uh, a fourth rather aspect of shadow is our survival plan from childhood that's turned into a, a, an unholy version of a redemption plan as an adult. So I don't, when I say redemption plan, I'm not talking about spirit redemption. I'm talking about the ego's distortions about redemption. And the redemption plan is that I'm going to make up for how I failed to get the connection or the validation or the safety that I needed growing up by over-excelling, over-achieving, mm -hmm. um, and, and all kinds of other different forms of redemption plan as, a, as an adult, uh, you know, having a certain amount of power, having a certain amount of money, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And those redemption plan scripts that leaders are not knowing they're operating from as adults undermine and sabotage their authentic leader effectiveness. Another dimension of, of shadow that leaders deal with is money shadow, not having right relationship with money, thinking about money in ways that actually sabotage profits or that, uh, that uh, aggrandize money to a level where they're willing to sacrifice integrity, relationships, social responsibility in order to get greater profits in the short run despite committing brand slaughter, as David Corbin refers to it, in the long run. And then the final aspect of shadow that's very big with leaders is boundaries shadow. Mm. And what boundaries shadow is, is that the whole notion of, of having boundaries is an area that's very confusing to the, the people in general. And within that, leaders, because it's confusing to people in general. Because most people think of a boundary as a line drawn in the sand. Mm-hmm as an ultimatum. And those are not boundaries. They get misdefined as boundaries, but that's not what a boundary is. A boundary is any limit I need to honor to love, if it's a personal relationship, or collaborate, if it's a, a work relationship, with you, without resentment, and with integrity. So boundaries, real boundaries, authentic boundaries, are about collaboration, not about ultimatums or lines drawn in the sand. And so when leaders don't have clarity about what healthy boundaries are and how to enact them in effective ways in their leadership role, they're in boundary shadow too. So we have power shadow, authority shadow, archetypal shadow, survival and redemption plan shadow, money shadow, and boundary shadow, all of which are part of shadow illiteracy in leaders, not because they're horrible people, but because shadow, the whole area of shadow, is something that's in what linguists call an empty category. And what in, in the field of linguistics, an empty category is, is a phenomenon that's occurring that has no name. And what it, when a phenomenon is, going, phenomenon is going on that has no name, we can't develop conscious relationship with it. So no harm, no shame, no fault, no blame, but, or and, now that the leaders that are listening to and watching our conversation today, or in this past few minutes, my monologue about this today, are aware 
of the existence of shadow and its unintended negative impacts on leader effectiveness, now we're responsible for developing shadow literacy as leaders. Whew. That was awesome. I just thinking about myself. That's all I can do now is think about myself. Oh my word. Um, so as, um, unless we want to go into psychotherapy, what are some resources? <laughs> what are some resources um, that, uh, people could go to to learn about this and then to learn about themselves in relationship to any of these forms of shadow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great question, Hugh, because this dimension that we're talking about right now, specific having to do specifically having to do with leader shadow. I'm, I'm the only psychologist I know who really talks about all of the dimensions of this and who mentors leaders in developing leader shadow literacy. Now, there may be others that I haven't met or been turned on to yet who are doing this kind of work with leaders without going into the realm of psychotherapy. Again, I'm bringing a psychotherapist's wisdom to leader mentoring around this. But there are all kinds of books that are available that, will, that can help people become more aware of the phenomenon of shadow. Uh, so, um, and I'll probably, I'm, I'm not recalling the titles just off the top of my head of those general books on shadow, but there are a few that are that are good, and maybe I can dig them up for you, and and you can post them. I will put those in the notes section with links. Do you write about this, or do you plan to write about this? Uh, yes, I. Well, what I've done, Hugh, is I've given keynotes on this. I have given training programs on shadow literacy, and I will most likely transfer some of my training material on shadow literacy into online training at some point in the future. I just don't know exactly when I will do that. So I don't mean to create scarcity around this. It's just that this area of leadership effectiveness is so untended to that it's, it's been all that I can do over the past few years to just start integrating this into leader effectiveness mentoring. Mm -hmm. And of course, the next step is to make it available in an online course format in the future. And, and then perhaps from there into a book on shadow literacy for leaders. I'm, I'm not sure how that's going to pan out. Great. Great. Well, we will hope that your schedule opens up so you can do that. I find this to be extremely valuable because um, these are areas that I'm have been totally blind to. And as, as you know, I've spent a number of years studying the work of Murray Bowen, psychiatrist and Bowen systems, which is a leadership methodology. And it's given me uh, self-awareness without these psycho psychological terms there. Bowen uses another set of terms. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of, tapping at the door of self-awareness in some of these categories. Um, but the good news is I'm, I'm better than I was. This has been very informative and very informative. And I will put in this interview the link to drgruder.com. And um, you can share with me other links that you want me to direct people to so they can learn more about your work. And so thank you for, this is a snippet this is a, a, a micro of David's macro um, knowledge base on so many different topics. I find this one to be so helpful. Just even knowing that that exists helps me start to identify areas that I need to take responsibility for. And so that in itself is a really good resource. As we're signing off, any, any closing thought or particular wish or tip that you would have for leaders who want to get their head around this, this area of capacity building? 
Yes. I, and it's piggybacking on what you were just saying about your own doors opening around shadow awareness. You're in my golden judgment of you. You're a brilliant leader mentor. You're gifted as a leader, as a, as a conductor. You understand leadership from so many different angles at a much deeper and broader level than, than many leaders do, which is why you mentor leaders. And that's tied to my closing comment, Hugh, which is that this is not about shame or blame or anything along those lines. It's quite the opposite, which is that even people who are effective, seasoned leaders, who are so seasoned like you that they mentor other leaders, simply haven't been exposed to this dimension of leadership. And all of us can think about leaders in our lives, in organizations we're connected with, places of, of worship that we're connected with, governmental entities <laughs> that we are aware of, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that are operating from a place of shadow in their mm -hmm. relationship to how they express leadership. And they don't even know that there is such a thing as leader shadow let alone what the dimensions are, let alone how to develop mm -hmm. conscious relationship with these aspects of ourselves so that we can lead in an elevated way. Imagine, and this is my final closing comment, imagine what it would be like if the leaders in your business, in your nonprofit, mm -hmm. in your community organization, your places of worship, your, the, the government, were really aware of leader shadow and had literacy around right relationship with these dimensions. Imagine what the quality of leadership would be. Imagine what the quality of your culture in your organization or in our country would be if there was literacy around shadow dimensions of leadership. That's my final piece, is imagine what it would be like if we really did have leader shadow literacy. It's possible to develop. Let's do it. Awesome. Awesome. That's a call to action if I ever heard of one. Dr. David Gruder, dear friend, and um, so knowledgeable on so many topics. This is one that um, really deserves more hearing. Thank you for being my special guest today. My joy as always.